So the slats that we are going to put on to stand on are going to be 60 millimeters by 30 millimeters again. So I'm just going to draw the end face of one of those, just starting at this this at corner of this end frame. So I'm going to click, drag, move my mouse along the red axis and type in 60. Move my mouse along the blue axis and type in 19. And snap perpendicular to that edge, close my shape off. So that's the end fit surface of one of those slats. I'm going to push pull and I'm going to just move my mouse to this outside face so I know that that's, those two are exactly in line. Now again I'm going to triple click on that and go make component and I'll call this the slat and hit create. Now I'm going to want these a series of these spaced out so I'm going to give myself a 5mm gap on the end and using the move tool I'm going to click on this corner here, hold down control and I know this is 60 millimeters wide and I want a 5 millimeter gap so I'm going to type in 65 and hit enter. Now before I do anything else I'm going to type in um, keep an eye on the length box down in the bottom right I'm going to type in X and then let's say we're going to have 5 of these slats so X5 so as you can see that's actually created five copies of that original and spaced them out as per that original copy. So there's a 65mm distance between this point and this point and a 65mm distance between this point. Now as you can see that hasn't really worked out that well for me so I'm going to have to adjust the length of these um, cross rails and move this end frame out of it so I can fit all those slats in. This is where actually creating these as components is going to be really helpful. So I'm just going to click on this end frame, I'm going to move it, snap from that corner to that corner, then move it again along the red axis, 5mm. Now I'm going to double click on this. Um, but we need to see the rest of the model now so I know how far to stretch the end of this rail out. So I'm going to go up to View, Component Edit and Untick Hide Rest of Model. Now my view is a bit obstructed, so another handy feature of SketchUp is I can go View, Face Style and then tick X-Ray. So that actually makes all of those surfaces see-through. So now I can select the end of that rail using the Move tool, click on that bottom corner and drag along the red axis until I hit that face. So you'll, you'll see it snaps to that face perpendicular. Click on that and go back up to face style, untick x-ray and you can see that's edited both of those components. So it's a real time saver if you can set these up as components. Okay so now let's add the little decorative splines to the corners of these mitered joints. So I'm going to double click on this end frame to go into component edit. Then using my line tool I'm going to snap to the midpoint of this corner and along this horizontal surface I'm going to type in 25, hit enter, hit escape. Now I'll do the same on this vertical surface, 25 millimeters, and enter. Now I'm going to with the select tool, control and click on these lines. Then with the move tool I'm going to move this line 1.5 millimeters to the left and then press control and copy that line back to the right 3 millimeters. So that will give us a 3 millimeter spline. I'm going to close that off, close it off again. Now just looking at this I think I'm going to want two splines in each corner so I'm just going to select all of these faces again, all of these edges sorry. With the move tool I'm going to move it 6 millimeters to the left and then Press Ctrl to copy and I'm going to move this 12mm to the right. Now I've got two splines in that corner. Now I can redraw those splines out on the far corner but an easier way to do that is to double click on each of these faces to select the face and the lines. With my move tool I'm going to press Ctrl and I'm just going to copy these out just past 
to the edge of my frame, but make sure I stay on that green axis. Now with the select tool, make sure they're the only things selected. Now right click, flip along, render it. Sorry, not red direction, flip along. Green direction, there we go. And then with the move tool again, click on that corner and drag it back along the green axis until you get to the the edge there. So as you can see that's saved us the effort of line redrawing all of those lines. So now I've got two splines in each corner and because we've set these up as components it's copied those through. Now let's add some chamfers to the corners of these slats just so they're not a sharp edge. So I'm going to double click on that to go into component mode and I'm just going to click on this edge with my move tool I'm going to press control and drag that edge 1.5 millimeters along that horizontal surface and then press space I'm going to select this edge again using the move tool I'm not going to copy this time I'm just going to move that edge down 1.5 millimeters so that's given us a nice chamfer on that top edge there and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of this so click that edge move control to copy 1.5 millimeters select that first edge again and then move that down 1.5 millimeters so now I've got a nice chamfer on each of those slats okay so now let's add some screw holes to the bottom of this rail so we can fix our slats down so because we've drawn each of these as a component I can actually just draw line work straight onto the face of these and it's not going to split those surfaces so I'm going to draw a line from that intersect point there straight down along the blue axis so I get to that edge and then straight along the green axis until I get to that edge and repeat on this other side so I snap to the intersect point straight down along the blue axis and then straight back along that horizontal face. Now I'm going to draw another line from midpoint to midpoint here and I can get rid of these two vertical lines. I'm going to copy this line by using move. I'm going to copy that in 12 millimeters that way and same again with this other line, move tool, copy it in 12 millimeters. Now with the select tool I'm going to double click on this rail to go into edit mode and I can actually draw the circles to those intersect points. So they're like construction lines. So I'm going to make this an 8mm diameter circle so I'm going to type 4 into the radius and I'm going to repeat that again here and I'm going to push pull these circles up 30 millimeters. So you can see when I switch into X ray mode that those cylinders extend 30 millimeters up into the rail. Now I'm going to draw another circle, turn off X ray mode. I'm going to actually hide the rest of the model so you can actually see these circles clearer. I'm going to draw another circle into the bottom here and I'm going to make this one 3mm diameter so 1.5 radius and again over here five, and then again with the push pull tool Oops, I've got the wrong surface there. Push pull tool, I'm going to snap to that top edge. So that will give me a hole all the way through now. Do that again here. And snap to that top edge. So that's giving me screw holes all the way through that rail. Now rather than delete this line work, I'm going to use the move tool. And actually copy that to each of these 
flat locations. So again, go into component edit and I'll have to turn back on the rest of the model. Draw my circles, so 1.5 for the smaller one and 4 for the larger one. one. Okay so now it's just a matter of using push pull on all those circles again to put my the holes all the way through the rails. Now this time I'm going to use the push pull on the small hole first. Just to make things a bit easier. We'll just go through every hole and do the three diameter hole first. And now I'm going to go through to that bigger hole and push that up 30. Okay, so while that was a little bit time consuming, we've saved ourselves time again by making these rails components. So everything we've just done has been copied over to the other component. Now I'm going to exit out of the component mode and I'm going to draw a line select all of those lines I've drawn and delete those. Oops, as you can see I've extruded one of those circles too far so I'm just going to double click on that component edit and then I'm going to go view hide rest of model. So you can see I've push pulled that circle a little bit too far so I'm just going to fix that by using the push pull tool again on that surface and drag and snap. So all of those holes are in the right place now on each of those rails.